When answering the question of how to look up patents, I'm actually going to give you information on how to look up issued patents and pending patent applications. The reason is because most people use the term patent incorrectly and they'll, they'll use the term patent to describe pending patent applications. They're actually very different. So you have to file a patent application and the patent application has to go through the examination process at the United States Patent and Trademark Office and then the patent will hopefully be allowed and then will issue as a patent. So you have the stage where you have a patent application where it's called a, only a patent application and then if that patent application is allowed and issues, then you can call that a patent. And so most of the time people are going to be saying looking up patents and what they really mean is looking at patents and patent applications. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be talking about both patent applications and patents when I talk about looking at patents in this video. Now, when I'm looking up patents or patent applications, I usually use one of two sources. One is going to be the United States Patent and Trademark Office, which is USPTO.gov, or I'll just use Google Patents. I think Google Patents is probably a better interface. That's what I tend to use more. It's a lot easier to quickly look up related uh, prior art and to download a PDF of the patent application or the, or the issued patent. Um, and it's easier to do keyword searches. And I think that it's a little bit faster than uh, the USPTO website. So I tend to use uh, Google, Google patents. Um, that tends to be my favorite, but there are some times, especially where there's new publications where Google hasn't captured the new publication data. Some new stuff may not be captured on Google patents. So you may have to do some redundant searching, or especially if you're searching for things that are really new or you're having trouble finding things, you may need to do some searching on the USPTO website because that's the official database where all patent publications and issued patents um, are going to be stored and where you're where anybody else is going to be getting things um, that's where the official stuff is and that's the, kind of the important thing to, to note here is that you know everything this is going to be published patent application issued patents and they're issued by the USPTO and they are published by the USPTO. Now you're going to have a really easy time if you have some sort of number to look up and there are going to be three main numbers that, you're, you, that you hopefully will have if you're going to be able to look up a patent or pending patent application or published patent application. So every patent application and every issued patent has a patent application number. So you file a patent application, you get an application number, and when that patent issues, that patent application number is still associated with the issued patent number. So the other number is going to be the issued patent number. You only get an issued patent number after the patent application has been filed, after it goes through the examination process, after it's allowed, an issue fee is paid, and then it actually issues as a granted patent. That's when you'll get a patent number. So then also there can be a publication number. So by default, patent applications are held in, in secrecy for 18 months from their earliest priority date. So if you start with a non-provisional patent application, it will publish 18 months after you file that uh, the original non-provisional patent application. Or if you start with a provisional patent application, wait a year and then file a non-provisional patent application, the non-provisional patent application will then, uh, will then publish eight months after you file the non-provisional patent application. There are some exceptions. So um, you can file what's called a non-publication request. Um, you, can, you can say, hey, USPTO, I don't want you to publish my patent application while it's still pending. It will still have to uh, publish if it, if it issues as a patent. So every issued patent will publish and be publicly available, but not every pending application will publish. Um, you, can, you can just file a non-publication request um, if you want to, but you're not able to file a non-publication request if you file for foreign patent protection. I would say most of the time people don't file non-publication requests, but keep in, keep in mind though, when you're searching for stuff, um, especially if you don't have a patent application or, or patent number or publication number, um, that you know something may not be public. There may be patents or patent, or they may, there may be patent applications out there, but they just may not be published. So you're probably asking yourself, what do these patent applications look like. So let me give you some examples. So let's start off with the patent application number. So the patent application number, it's going to have eight digits and typically it's going to be two numbers, a slash, and then three numbers, a comma, and three numbers. I'll give you a, an example here and I'll give you an example here. So there's, uh, you know, like, you know, as you can see, 
two numbers, and typically it's going to be you know something that's going to be kind of low. You know, a lot of times it's going to be say 15 or 16. There's going to be a slash, and then there's going to be six numbers, um, three numbers separated by a, a, a comma with, with another three numbers. Um, you know, sometimes people don't use the slash. Sometimes people don't use the comma. Um, but this is how you're going to be able to tell if you have a patent application number. And for patent publications, you can usually tell those right off because they're going to have 11 digits starting with a year that's going to be four digits. So I'll give you an example here and I'll give you an example here. So you have a year and in, in four digits, so it could be 2020, it could be 2015, 2017. Typically there's going to be a slash and then there's going to be seven digits. Every once in a while, because you know it's there's going to be a leading zero, people may drop off um, some some of those numbers. So sometimes people, you know, they'll just put the slash and six numbers. If you're looking uh, patent app, patent publication numbers up, sometimes you have to add a you know a, a zero in there for there to be the full 11 numbers for it to be a, a full publication number. And usually you're going to be able to tell that it's a publication number because it starts with that year of four digits. Um, and that's going to be different than patent numbers and uh, patent application numbers. So you're going to know right off. If it's not quite the right number of digits, you'll know that you may need to have to fill in something if it is a uh, patent publication number. Another thing I've seen sometimes too is people may shorten the year to just like say 20 or, or 15. Not as common, but keep that in mind is if you see something that looks like it, it could be a year, people may have dropped off the, you know, the 19 or the, or, or, or the 20. That's a possibility as well. But usually it's pretty easy to tell patent uh, uh, publication numbers because you're going to have the year, the slash, and then seven digits. Um, sometimes there's not the slash. Um, sometimes people will put weird commas in there, but not typically. Um, but again, usually pretty easy to tell what a patent publication number is given the year. And last but not least are issued patent numbers. And so issued patents have started all the way from one and we're currently in the tens of millions. But most modern patents you're going to find are going to be in the millions or are going to be in the tens of millions. I'll give you an example here and I'll give you an example here. So most of the time you're going to have, um, you know, the commas um, where they are typically typically are in numbers like this. So in the millions, you're going to have seven digits. You're going to have a first digit, a comma, three digits, and then you're going to have a comma and then another three digits. In the tens of millions, of course, you're going to have two digits, a comma, three digits, a comma, and three digits. Every once in a while, people may not put the commas in there, but that's something that you're gonna you're gonna notice right off. It's gonna be in the you know millions or tens of millions. That's gonna be the vast majority of, uh, of issued patent numbers that you're gonna find. You may find some really really old ones that are in the hundreds of thousands. Um, maybe doing certain sort of prior art research, but especially things like related to computers. I don't think you're ever really going to find anything in the hundreds of thousands, um, you know, in terms of, of patent numbers. But yeah, again, you know, usually going to have the you know either in the tens of million series or in the nine uh, or, or in the million series. And one bonus number is for design patents. The 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 ones that are in the tens of millions or millions, um, you know, possibly lower. Th those are utility patents. But you can tell a design patent right off really easily because it has a D in front. I'll give you an example here, and I'll give you an example here. So you're going to have the D. You're going to have three numbers, a comma, and three numbers because right now design uh, patents they are only in the hundreds of thousands um, in terms of numbers. We haven't hit the millions of design patents. Probably with the next few years you'll start seeing design patents in the millions. So you'll have the D. You'll have one number, a comma, three numbers, a comma, and another three numbers. But for now, uh, design patents are in the hundreds of thousands. So it's going to be the D. Three numbers, comma, and number three, another three numbers. Again, you know, people may not always do the commas, but usually the D is going to be in there. That's an actual, an official part of the design patent number, and so the D has to be in there. But what if you don't have a number? What if you just see some, something that says patent pending or people talk about patented technology or they just say that they have patents on things? How do you look things up then? It's honestly pretty difficult and you may not actually be able to look things up. And as I mentioned before, by default, patent applications are held in secret for at least 18 months. 
um, you know, while they're while while they're pending and potentially up until they issue. So if someone may say that they're a patent pending, and if it's a provisional patent application, you cannot look up provisional patent applications during the one year they're pending. They, they just they are they are held in secret for sure. Um, and if you have a pending patent application during that examination process, maybe it'll publish. 18 months after it was filed by default, or eight months if you do provisional, then non-provisional, maybe then it will publish. But again, that may be completely secret. So keep that in mind. If somebody is talking about patented technology that's that's patent pending, you may not be able to look that up um, just because it's completely secret. There's also the potential that people are using the term incorrectly. Maybe they actually have a copyright. Maybe they have a trademark. Or maybe they are, are planning on filing a patent application and don't really understand how to use those terms. And they would say, oh yeah, we have patents when it's like, well, you know, you don't really have patents. You maybe have, you have a trademark or maybe you use the, the circle C for, for copyright, but you've never filed an application. Or people don't really understand what a patent application is. Sometimes people think, well, I'm gonna write a description, I'm gonna mail it to myself, and I have what's, what some people call a poor man's patent. That is not a patent. That is not patented technology in any way, shape, or form. That's not even patent pending. So to be patent pending, you have to have a provisional patent application that has, has been filed at the USPTO and is still um, during the one-year pendency of that provisional patent application, or you have to have, have a non-provisional patent application that has been filed and that is still pending, that is in examination or waiting for examination, um, that either hasn't gone abandoned or that hasn't issued at a, as, as a patent. So that's the only time that people can really say that something, somewhat, something is patent pending. And honestly, I see a lot where people use those terms incorrectly. So keep that in mind as well. So if you don't have any information, and, and I, I do this all the time, so how do I find uh, patents or patent applications when somebody, somebody just says patent pending or patented or you just know a company name? So. Again, I usually go to Google Patents. That's usually a pretty good place to start. I will put in the, the company number because the assignee of the patent, that, that is the owner of, of the patent or the owner of a, a pending application, that's usually named on the application. Um, also, the applicant, that, that, that could be the company. But again, that's not always gonna be the case. And I've seen this a lot where for instance, you have inventors who keep it in their own name instead of in the name of the company, or the company has a, an, a patent holding company that is totally different from the name you may be aware of. So keep in mind that if you're doing a search related to a company name, that may not turn something up. So just because you don't find anything doesn't mean there's not anything out there. So then, then kind of how do you how do you figure you know what are some other ways to figure this out? So another thing that I'll do is I'll look at some of the main people who are in the company, especially for small companies. It's likely that those people are going to be named as inventors of the technology, and so I'll do a search by inventor. And sometimes you'll get a hit that way. Is you know maybe the people who are the you know the the, the CTO or some people who are the the primaries who are related to the technology or the people who say that they invented it. You can do search related to their name and they may come up as inventors. Those tend to be the two main ways, but again, it's not really easy and there have been times where you know there are pending patent applications out there or issued patents, but because the name of the company doesn't correspond to the applicant name or to the ass assignee name, you can't really find that patent really easily, especially if they don't provide you with a, a patent number, an application number, or a publication number. And similarly, you know, it may not be uh, easy to understand who the inventors are. You know, a lot of times, maybe it's some contractors who aren't even on the website. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking for looking for patents, and there's no specific information. One. There may not be any any pending patent application or issued patents at all. That's not uncommon. Or it may be secret, and you may not be able to find it because the, the uh, patent application or issued patent hasn't published yet. That's also a possibility. Issued patents do have to publish, but there's a little bit of a lag between you know be, between when people pay the issue fee when they're allowed and then when they actually publish. So you know they're, they're you know it's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to actually get access to th these things, and because the the data on this stuff doesn't always correlate with company names or inventor names, things like that, um, you know you may have a hard time finding things still. And I have a difficult time with this myself. I've been doing this a long time, and I still have issues with that. So that's what you have to keep in mind when uh, looking up patents. Be sure to subscribe if you want to get more insider information on patents and startups. And if you got some uh, value out of this video. 
Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Let me know if you tried doing patent searching or if you've had, had difficulty, if any of this surprised you. Let me know if you have any uh, suggestions for additional patent videos. We'd love to hear those. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you again in the next video.